In the previous section, we built and deployed a web application. We even scripted a simple deployment workflow. In this section, we're going to explore the idea of automation and tooling around Docker more in depth. The first step is to get familiar with the Docker Remote API. Docker was designed for automation and programmability. This command line interface that we've been using is actually a client that uses an HTTP API called the Remote API. By working with this API more directly, we can control Docker from a number of environments, not just the shell. Let's try using the API directly. Docker is normally configured to listen to a Unix socket, but we're going to use curl to interact with the API. So we need to modify Docker to also listen on a regular TCP port on localhost. If you're using the same Vagrant VM, we can make this change pretty quickly. Just open the slash etc slash init slash docker.conf file using sudo and vi. We're going to add some flags to the way Docker is started. We're going to add a flag to listen on localhost port 4243. In production environments, it's important we only listen on the localhost IP because otherwise it's possible anyone can connect and have full control of Docker. We also need to tell it to listen on the usual Unix socket, so we can also still access it the default way. Now we can restart Docker using the upstart, stop and start commands. I will start the container too, which we will need for later. We can test that our change has worked by hitting the ping endpoint with curl. We should get back OK. Now let's check out the documentation for the remote API. We can find it on the Docker docs website under Command and API References, Docker Remote API. Then we pick up the latest version. It takes a few clicks to get to. This is the API. These docs show all the endpoints, example requests, and other information useful for HTTP APIs. We first want to list containers, which happens to be the first endpoint. It has a number of parameters, but we don't need to worry as they're all optional. Let's try it. Since I have a container running, it is described here in JSON. This is the same data that the command line tool gets when we run Docker PS. Let's look at a more complicated operation with the API. Start a container. The doc tells us exactly what operations happen and when we do a Docker run. In short, we create a container, then start the container. Optionally, we attach to it, but we'll just inspect the logs after. Let's look at the create container endpoint. This example shows a large JSON object we need to construct, but it turns out the only required fields are image and CMD. Let's put together a request with curl to create a container. This is a POST request and it needs the container type of the application slash JSON. Then we can specify the data payload. Since it will use double quotes, we quote this with single quotes. And then write a JSON object specifying the image and command we'll want to run. In this case, just echo hello world. But if we request write, it should respond with the ID of our new container. But it hasn't run yet. We need to start it. This is a different endpoint. We just need to post a sub-resource of the container using its ID called start. No parameters are necessary. To see the output, we can use the logs endpoint of this container resource. A quick check of the docs shows we need to specify a query parameter of std out to get anything. So we'll add that. And there it shows our hello world echo output. Some of the API functionality gets tricky. For example, attaching, which we can't properly do from curl alone. Luckily, in most cases, 
we can use a library that wraps this API in the language of our choice. Let's take a look at the Python library. Docker-py is a Python library for the Docker API maintained by the Docker authors. With some Googling, you should be able to find a library for your language of choice. But for convenience, we'll look at using this one. We should have Python and pip installed from previous videos. But if not, you can install python-pip with apt-get. Then we can just pip install docker py. Now we'll change into the interactive Python shell to try this out. First, we import the module. Now we can create a client object. From here, we can use a number of functions that basically wrap the remote API. For example, we can easily list containers. We can also start a container with the same steps as before, but more conveniently in Python. First, we create a container. Then we start it. And we can check the logs. Most libraries will document their API quite well, giving you language idiomatic ways to work with more advanced aspects of the remote API. For example, we could have set the stream parameter to true, and it would have returned a Python generator to get logs back in real time with an interior interface. And that's the remote API. It's the basis for controlling Docker programmatically. Most of the time, you can just use the command line interfaces we've been doing. However, if you're working with a non-bash environment, it would be a good idea to find a library of your language to work with the remote API directly. In the next video, we will look at ways in which we can expose this control to other containers.